a question for Ben. Ben, how Morning. much um, more of the offense do you think uh, we might see from what we've seen in the preseason? A little bit. Um, not nothing crazy. Not like we're gonna, you know, you only saw a quarter of it or half of it. Well, there'll, there'll be a lot of the same stuff, but but quite, you know, and some new stuff. How you, how you feel about open, getting a chance to open up for this offense? Excited, nervous? Yes, yes, and yes. Um, you know, anxious, excited, nervous. Um, you know, a lot of we 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 hold ourselves to high expectations and high standards, and so. Um, I think as players, you, you have to, and I know, I'm sure the coaches are a little nervous and anxious too, so um, what a way to start against a, a really good football team in a hostile environment. Ben, what's your confidence level in the offensive line, especially having two rookies now with Dan Moore and Ken Kendrick and center? Do you do anything, do anything extra with them this week to, to get comfortable? Nope, I'm excited for them. And since there is some unknowns out there, maybe not for you, but for everyone else, are you encouraged more maybe by what you guys did in that preseason game? Yes and no. I mean, it's preseason. I don't, we we didn't show a lot. I'm sure Detroit didn't show a lot. Um, you know, there was a lot of guys up front got a lot of reps. You know, they played a lot of those games and stuff. Um, I know there was some was made of the rotation in terms of there was. I'm not even sure how many times that one group was together. I mean, we you know, the combinations that we had. So um, a lot of guys got experience, and and we're gonna have to kind of learn on the fly. All of us learn about each other. Um, it, it may not be pretty early, and we, we have to accept that fact too, but at the end of the day, we just have to do what we have to do to win a football game. Ben, the, uh, the pick six last year, and last year's game before halftime, is that a play that sticks with you and stuck with you, and, and is there an extra level of advantage? Do you know how many pick sixes I've thrown in my career? Me either. Ben, the, the franchise has made a point of trying to get the run game better. I mean, from Art to, to Kevin to mm -hmm. Mike T, what gives you confidence that, especially given the new faces in front of you, that you've been more productive in that area than you were? I think we're going to run the ball about every play. Um, so, you know, at some point, it's a, a, a big run's going to happen, I think. So, uh, you know, guys are just excited for the challenge. And when, what's impressed you about Moore and Green and how they've ramped up and You know, it's not like they, they're perfect or they don't make mistakes. But I think when they do make the mistakes, you can see how much it, it, it burns at them. You know, it, uh, it bothers them when they make the mistake. And um, I, I think that's, that's a sign of a professional. Uh, it's a sign of a, of, a, of a man that takes pride in his work. And, and I've seen that from those guys. Um, they're both going to be exceptional football players. Um, once again, like anything, there's going to be growing pains. And, and we're all going to experience them, even someone in their 18th season is going to experience growing pains. Uh, the key is, do we learn from those growing pains? How often uh, do those pains come? You know, do we learn from the one time? And so um, I, I'm excited for them. I think they're nervous and excited. And um, but but, you know, they have a passion for this game and this team. And you can see it already. You can see those two are they're black and gold. And so um, it'll be fun to, for them to get out there. Okay, uh, someone along those lines, you know, for years you've had Al protecting the blind side. Mm -hmm. Now you've got a rookie protecting the blind side. Any more skittish about that or aware of that? You know what? Uh, I miss all those guys up front, obviously. But uh, I have to have confidence in who's, who's up there and in front of me now. Um, I'll have faith that Dan's going to get it done. Uh, if the game's over and, and he's given up seven sacks, we might have to have a talk. But I don't anticipate that happening, you know. Uh, I'll say it over and over. There'll be growing pains, I'm sure. But um, he takes pride in his work, and, and I'm excited about that. And not only the two guys in the offensive line, but you're going to be counting on basically rookie. You feel almost like a teacher out there sometimes. Sometimes, but sometimes I'm, I'm still trying to learn it too. You know, it's it, it'd be one thing if I was hoping these guys learn an offense that I knew like the back of my hand. But um, we're all learning together. We're all going through the growing pains together. Um, the only advantage that I have over these guys really is that I've been doing it for a while. You know, I kind of know what to expect when to step into a stadium. Um, and and it, it was fun, even in the preseason, being able to talk to Naj and some of these guys about, you know, it feels different. I know you went to Alabama. I know you went to a big school, but there's something different about stepping in an NFL stadium. And um, as we all know, anyone that's covered football like you guys have for a while, it's, you go to a preseason game and it's got a feeling. But you get to the regular season and it has a different feeling in itself too. So, um, Everyone's going to be nervous, and, and if the guys, when I ask them, if they tell me they're not nervous, I call them a liar because I'm nervous and I've been doing it for a long time. So uh, it's going to be fun.
Are you any tougher on these guys uh, than you have been past season, just given how young they are? I think it was Najee who said he learned quickly. You have to be really precise when you're in the huddle with you. Well, I think we, we all need to demand um, a, a level of excellence, right, with this level because the other side of the ball um, is doing that and other guys are doing it. And uh, it's such a team sport. Uh, it's the ultimate team sport where not one person can take over a game, really. You need everybody. And so if you've got 10 guys all on their P's and Q's and doing what they're supposed to do and one guy isn't quite there, it can affect the whole play. It can affect the whole game. So um, I think each man, and they, I, I want them to demand that of me as well, um, that we need to be on it and, and really demand excellence of ourselves. Ben, you and uh, Eric established a connection really quickly last year. Now Pat's list is started alongside of him. How, how quickly do you think you've developed a connection with him at the tight end and just comparatively with the, those two guys? Hopefully real quick. Um, you know, he's, he's shown some really good things in camp and in the preseason. Uh, but once again, that, that's not the regular season. It doesn't count yet. Uh, and I told him that after he caught his first touchdown that, that I threw to him. I said, congratulations, it doesn't count yet. Um, but, uh, and, and I hope he and I just continue to develop that relationship with another year here. So um, we'll, we'll see. With this, this team has always been uh, tight end driven, you know, high expectations from tight ends. Um, and so we, we expect from them as well. Just excited for the opener. I mean, just to play in front of fans again. Um, a lot of respect for that, the, the Buffalo Mafia and all they have up there. So. Uh, I'm just excited to go out and play football uh, in front of fans and against a really good team. Ben, you've been here for a long time, seen a lot of different contract negotiations with your teammates. What's your message to TJ this week while all this stuff is kind of working its way out, running the process? Well, I think TJ should get whatever the heck he wants. Uh, he's arguably the best football and you know, football football player in the game right now, not just on defense, just in general. Um, you know, I've been through a few negotiations here with contracts. Um, you know, one of the reasons I took less money was for guys like him to get paid, and he needs to get paid. Um, he deserves every penny that he wants and asks for. And so, um, you know, T.J. Watt is is that guy that should get whatever he wants. And is that kind of feeling in the room that the guys understand this process? Um, well, there's a lot of young guys that don't understand the process because they haven't been through it. Um, that's why I think I was I'm able to speak with T.J. a little bit and talk to him, but I think. The feeling in the room is mutual in the sense that we all know how great he is and what he deserves. Ben, where, Everyone on this level, at least. Where does it, uh, how do you balance it? Where does the line get drawn be, be, uh, between a player who deserves what he should get paid as opposed to understanding that you maybe you have to take a step back because of maybe wanting to sign up? Uh, you know, it's it's tough. I mean, I, I, like I said, I've been here long enough that it was, it was easy enough for me to say that, you know, um, because I know what it takes for this thing. But he's trying to sign his kind of first big deal. And he's got defensive player of the year. I mean, he is. And so, like I said, everyone in this, in this locker room understands and knows that. He should understand and know that. Um, the problem is uh, when, you, when you negotiate and do contracts, it's not always two-sided. And so when the bosses um, or the higher-ups are in charge, there's only so much you can do. And so we all feel bad for TJ. I know everyone knows how bad he wants to be out there. I mean, the guy was here every single day when he probably didn't even need to be uh, working, busting his butt. So, um, you know, he should get taken care of. When it comes to the Bills two years ago, you could only watch last year you were in it. Why have they had your guys' number for the last couple of years? I don't know. Um, you know, we didn't play very well last year. I don't remember the year before that, sorry. But um, last year our defense played well. Uh, we just didn't play well in offense. When you prepare for a team that you're pretty familiar with in week one, how much of it is watching what they did last season versus trying to pick up any new wrinkles in the preseason that you didn't have last season? A lot de determines, um, you know, staff. They have the same staff they do. They have a lot of the same players. They have almost everyone the same. So uh, you anticipate a lot of the same things with a few wrinkles. You guys, two more. Two more. The growing pains of the young guys. What's, how do you make sure that it doesn't become a negative on mistakes? I mean, every player makes mistakes mm -hmm. sometimes. Those guys might feel more pressure because it's their first game. And, mm -hmm. oh my God, you know, it's relatively the game of the season. You know, it's right. It's over. How do you that walk that line with them and make sure that it doesn't become negative? Um, just making sure, especially someone like KG, he's a, he's a passionate football player. You know, he he's – you know he gets he gets going, and I have to reel him back. I'm saying, hey, listen, you're the center. You're you're too important to to dwell in the last play. Whether that's getting feisty with a guy, or uh, you made a mistake, or you did something really well, um, you have to almost be a quarterback mentality. You have to move on, and and that's what I'll just I'll just try and keep my eye on guys as we go. Um, see who's um, you know maybe 
can't calm themselves back down or is getting too riled up and just do my best to, to bring them back kind of into an even keel, if you will, for, for when we need them. Last one. With the crowd noise up there, first full house and over a year, young offensive line, does that make communication? Yeah, it's going to be tough. Uh, we'll obviously have the speakers out here today, um, making it as loud as we can. But uh, you still can't really replicate what it's like. Um, and so, you know, so far in the preseason, Coach Canada has done a great job of getting plays in early, um, early enough that you can break the huddle and kind of have time to talk and communicate. So hopefully that continues and, and you know, we can just um, communicate, especially as a young group. All together we can communicate and, you know, things won't always go well, but we'll, be, we'll see what we can do. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody.